Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Simon Perkins. I'm going to run a demo of the HTTP um, app for iOS uh, directly from my um, iPad mini. Oops. Yeah. I'm not sure what's happening with the screen here. Let me give you a bit of background. The HTTP watch um, product is a commercial HTTP sniffer that's used for debugging and optimizing websites. And some of you in the past may have used it on Windows, where it's available as an add-on for Firefox and Internet Explorer. Now, this year, we released um, a version for iOS. Um, but unlike those other browsers, we weren't able to extend uh, mobile Safari. We would have liked to have been able to, but that's not possible on the iOS platform. So what we did instead was we built uh, a browser into an app and then added the HTTP sniffing uh, functionality uh, into that app. And hopefully, in just a moment, you'll, you'll see that app. It's available in the App Store. There are two versions of the app. Uh, like we do on Windows, there's a free uh, basic edition uh, that has a restricted user interface, but will record full log files. There's also a paid a professional version, which has no um, restrictions. Um, but the good news is I have some free copies, limited number of free copies of that to give away uh, this week. So if you're interested, please come and find me afterwards. Um, good, right here. So here's the, the app. Um, I'm going to open it up now. And what you see is what it looks like uh, any sort of browser you might see on a tablet. It has the standard sort of navigational controls. It has a location field. It has um, bookmarks. It also has a tools menu that enables you to clear the, ca uh, the, the browser cache and cookies. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, load up a, a page. Let's load up the uh, Google home page here. And uh, this loads up using the uh, UI web view control. So it's not loading up in mobile Safari. But under the covers, it does share a lot of the same code as mobile Safari. And the behavior is very similar. Uh, the major difference is that if you use the UI web view uh, control, it's not using the fast Nitro JavaScript engine that mobile Safari uses. So if your app is heavy on JavaScript, it would execute more slowly within HTTP Watch. So having loaded that um, page up within the app, I'm going to select the waterfall button on the uh, toolbar. And you get a fairly conventional looking HTTP uh, waterfall chart here displayed. If you've used HTTP Watch before, then uh, the, the layout and the colors should be familiar to you. Um, the light blue row at the top is uh, a page heading. That represents the page and the requests within it. It's possible to um, collapse that up like this and expand it back out. And that's useful if you were recording um, transactions across several pages. You can group uh, the requests together. Um, so the page title is shown on the page heading. If I select that page heading, it gives me a summary of what was required to build up that page. So it gives me um, the number of bytes that were downloaded from the web server, the number of bytes that were sent to the web server. It also shows the um, savings that were achieved through HTTP compression, the DNS lookups for the page, and TCP connects, and then the, the detailed timings for the um, page load event uh, and the render start event. So going back to the waterfall chart, you can see, um, hopefully you can see those events um, marked on the chart as vertical lines. Uh, the vertical green line is the render start event. Uh, the vertical um, red line uh, is the page load event. Um, on the left-hand side, the icons indicate the type of request. So the first curved um, arrow indicates a redirect. And then the other icons indicate whether it was HTML or image type content uh, that was downloaded. Um, the colored um, blocks within each uh, request indicate the relative timings. I'm sure you've seen this before on other waterfall charts. Uh, for example, the purple coloring is the DNS lookup time. Uh, the light blue color is the HTTPS uh, handshake time. So I'm going to um, select uh, one of those requests, and we can go in for a more detailed view. And I think this is where HTTP Watch goes um, further than you see with other tools on the mobile platform. It gives some very low level information about timings and also at, at the byte level for the streams sent to and received from the web server. So here we can see the more detailed timings for the different aspects of that request, uh, the connect and SSL um, handshake times. It shows you the cookies sent to 
uh, and received from the server. And each of these values here, you can, with a long press, you can copy them to the clipboard and put them into a, an email or anything else that you require. Uh, the content section here gives a summary of the content that was downloaded for this request, uh, together with a snapshot and information about compression. And I'm quickly going to run through the rest of this as I'm running short on time. So we've got the request headers, uh, the response headers. Uh, the network section shows the IP and port addresses used on the client and server side. And here's the low-level information I was uh, talking about previously. If I go to the response stream here, then I can see the actual bytes returned um, back over this HTTPS stream. Uh, you can see the, the textual headers returned at the top. And then um, the gzipped, um, chunked, encoded response body is shown there, byte for byte, uh, which you could examine in more detail if you required. Um, going back to the um, summary there, uh, you can see it indicates that three chunks were used for the download. So quite a lot of low-level information about the underlying HTTP transport provided. Um, and in the final section here, um, the SSL section shows the type of protocol and the version and the size of the public key and symmetric key used for the SSL section. And in the, uh, oh, I've got some more time, great. <laughs> in the last um, uh, minute or two, what I wanted to show you as well is that um, uh, this is formatted for the iPad. There is, um, when you run it on the iPhone, and it is formatted differently to fit on the iPhone screen, it's the same app. Going back uh, to the main browser view here, if you're running on the iPad, you can split that view here so you can see them side by side. And I'm going to just load up another page. Let's load up the Facebook page. So as the page is loading, you can see the waterfall chart being um, generated in real time. And you can probably see the, the green event line appearing as the browser started to, to render itself. Uh, one more thing. Um, there is a, a menu here that enables you to uh, save log files away. You can save them in HWL format, which is the proprietary format we use in HTTP Watch. Um, but also in the HAR file format, which is compatible with other tools. You can save those files uh, locally and then um, extract them using iTunes file sharing by plugging in uh, your device into a Mac or a PC. Uh, you could also email those uh, log files elsewhere. Um, and with that, I think I've come to pretty much the end of my talk. Uh, thank you very much. If you're interested in knowing more, please find me later. And I, I do have a limited number of free copies um, to give away. Thank you. Thank you.